Hello everyone, welcome to MBBS classes. Myself, Dr. Hanifa. Today in this video, I'll be talking on congenital laryngeal cyst and the laryngocele. So, the other congenital anomalies of the larynx are laryngomalacia, which we have already discussed in our previous video. The other anomalies of the larynx, which may present as the strider in infancy, are laryngeal web, atresia, absent or rudimentary epiglottis, laryngeal cleft, vocal cord paralysis, and laryngotracheal, esophageal cleft, and the subglottic lesions. Today, we are restricting our video only on the congenital laryngeal cyst and the laryngocele. Congenital laryngeal cyst, these are the unusual causes of respiratory obstruction in children. It includes the valicular thyroglossal cyst, it may be saccular cyst and laryngoceles and it may be subglottic cyst. Today we will be discussing on the valicular thyroglossal cyst, saccular cyst and the laryngoceles. The subglottic cyst will be discussed separately in the subglottic lesions classes. So it is seen that these congenital laryngeal cyst, these are the rare causes of strider in infancy. Even though they are rare, but sometimes they can cause potentially severe airway obstructions. So we must be aware about the conditions, how to diagnose and how to prevent the untoward incidents in the infancy. So first component of the congenital laryngeal cyst is the valicular thyroglossal cyst. So this anomaly, it originates from the thyroglossal duct. Again, it is a rare anomaly of the larynx, but it is it can cause potential lethal airway obstruction in the neonates. The location of this cyst is definitely, since it is arising from the thyroglossal duct, the location it is at the base of the tongue in the valicular area. Because the thyroglossal duct, if you see the embryology, it arises, this site is the site of the foramen cecum from where this thyroglossal cyst originates. So to confirm whether the valicular cyst is of the thyroglossal uh, duct origin or not, it is seen that if the cyst have pseudostratified ciliated or squamous epithelium with mucous glands and specifically the presence of thyroid follicles in the stroma, it makes the diagnosis of valicular thyroglossal cyst. But if the thyro thyroid follicles are, could not be identified in the histopathological specimen, then this cyst is labeled as valicular cyst that is based on the location of the cyst that is in the valicular. Now, how do they present? These valicular thyroglossal cysts, they causes strider in the neonatal period. So, the symptom the most common is the strider and most of the in cases they are present within the few weeks of the birth then the again the among the other symptoms are the feeding difficulties it may be coughing cyanotic episodes failure to thrive breath holding spells in the neonates again if you see that the voice of the these uh, neonates it may be normal or they may have a muffled type of voice so whenever any a pediatric age group patients, especially the, in, in the infancy, if they are presenting with the strider, then the first investigation which must be advised or which is done is the laryngoscopic examination. So the laryngoscopy, it can be flexible laryngoscopy or direct laryngoscopy because this is the diagnostic tool to establish the diagnosis. Then we can also take the help of the radiological investigations like X-ray of the neck lateral view CT scan or the MRI of the neck to confirm our diagnosis. But to uh, find out the exact type of lesion, laryngoscopy is the main tool for the diagnosis. So if we find out that during the laryngoscopy, the one cyst in the valicular region. So valicular cyst is not the only diagnosis. There are certain other differential diagnoses which must be kept in mind. These could be dermoid teratoma, lingual thyroid, then the lymphatic and malformations and lastly is the hemangiomas. So these are the differential diagnosis of a valicular mass in case of infants and in the children. The treatment of these valicular cysts is 
by the endoscopic removal and sometimes it can be the marsupialization of the cyst in cases of acute emergency when the uh, infant is presenting with the severe airway obstruction in that case the aspiration sometimes is uh, done till the definitive treatment is finally performed so another type of the congenital laryngeal cyst is the laryngeal sacular cyst and the similar origin of the cyst is the laryngocele these laryngeal sacular cyst and the laryngoceles they arise from the sacular appendage so before we come to the disease proper let us refresh the anatomy of the laryng laryngeal sacule so the this is the uh, coronal section of the larynx you can see here the sacule this is the area of the sacule the sacule is a mucosa li lined out pouching which arises from the anterior superior portion of the laryngeal ventricle so if you see here this is the vestibular fold or the false vocal cord this is the true cord or the vocal folds and the space between the vestibular fold and the vocal fold is called is known as ventricle the sacule is it arises as an outpouching which is lined by the mucosa from the anterior superior portion of the laryngeal ventricle then the sacule it, it extends superiorly between the base of the epiglottis between the false vocal cord and between this thyroid cartilage the sacule is also surrounded by scanty muscles if we see the function of the sacule theoretically it represents the vestigial air sac and the ventriculo sacular fold um, it stores the mucus and since the sacule is surrounded by the scanty muscles and the contraction of the muscles it helps in expressing its secretions over the vocal folds and helps and hence it helps in the lubrication of the vocal cords the size of the sacule is not fixed it varies in it is seen that in majority around uh, say 2 to 3rd of the population the length is around 6 to 8 mm but in some it may be more than 10 to 15 mm so these laryngoceles and the sacular cyst they arise from the expansion of these sacules or it can be due to the herniation of the sacule of the ventricle of the larynx but there is a basic difference between the uh, sacular cyst and the laryngoceles the difference is that the laryngoceles it contains purely the air the presence of the air is con the confirmatory for diagnosing laryngocele and the sacular cyst they are the fluid filled muscles now to understand better the site of the origin if you uh, this diagram is given to compare the endoscopic picture with the schematic coronal section so this is the ventricle and this is the sacule if you see here this is the ventricle a ventricle area between the this is the vestibular fold and this is the uh, vocal folds so if there is any mass which is arising from the anterior part of the ventricle it will definitely obscure the laryngeal inlet so this is how it will look and any mass which is arising from the ventricle and obscuring the laryngeal inlet will definitely cause strider and respiratory obstruction in cases of neonates so since the laryng uh, laryngeal sacular cyst and laryngocele they share the common site of origin but still there are certain differences it is seen that the laryngeal sacular cyst they are very rare in occurrence but when they occur they most of them they manifest during the in infancy but on the other way round the laryngoceles in literature till date very few hundred numbers have been reported and it is extremely rare in infants and children so in comparison to the laryngeal sacular cyst the sacular cyst is more commoner than the laryngocele and it is seen that laryngoceles if they manifest they manifest mostly in the adulthood during the middle age group the laryngeal sacular cyst by definition they are strictly fluid filled masses which originates from the sacule and on the other way round the laryngocele they occur due to the abnormal dilatation of the sacule and they must have air within their lumen the cause of origin of the laryngeal sacular cyst is thought to be due to the developmental failure to maintain the patency between the orifice 
between the saccule and the ventricle. So we have seen that the uh, saccule it originates from the ventricle and the orifice between the saccule and the ventricle it measures about 0.5 to 1 millimeter and failure to maintain the patency may lead to the formation of the saccular cyst. The second proposed theory is that it can also occur due to the obstruction of the collecting ducts of the submucosal glands which are located ar around the ventricle. Laryngocele is thought to be due to the abnormal dilatation of the saccule. If we see the symptomatology of these two diseases, the saccular cyst, it produces constant symptoms. Be it a strider, respiratory obstruction, the reason for the constant symptom is because of its mucoid content in the cystic mass. Whereas in cases of laryngocele, it, even though it is, with, it is not very much common in the infants, but when it produces the symptoms in infancy, the respiratory distress becomes more worse when the infant is crying because of the increased distension of the laryngocele with the air. And that is why the symptoms of the laryngocele, they are intermittent. So the basic difference is laryngocele will produce intermittent symptoms where the saccular cyst will produce constant symptoms. But in some of the cases when the laryngocele gets infected, then it can convert it uh, to laryngopiocele. That means when it contains pus also. In that case, it may present or it may mimic the laryngeal saccular cyst. These laryngeal saccular cysts, they are classified again based on its location. They are divided into two groups, anterior, anterior saccular cyst and the lateral saccular cyst. The lateral saccular cyst is more common in the infants. This anterior saccular cyst, it emerges from the anterior portion of the ventricle. It may extend medially and posteriorly like it, like this in this figure into the lumen of the larynx and it protrudes between the true and the false vocal cord. Whereas in the lateral saccular cyst, it expands posterior superiorly into the false vocal cord and the epiglottic fold and it is seen to expand within the paraglottic space. Again, same like the saccular cyst, the laryngoceles are again also classified based on its location. They are divided into three types, internal, external and the combined. We call it internal laryngoceles when it is confined within the thyroid cartilage, that is when it is confined within the laryngeal framework. It is called external laryngocele when the laryngocele it lies outside the cartilaginous laryngeal framework. In this case, these laryngoceles they pass through the thyroid membrane and they present as a mass in the neck. And this presentation is mostly seen in adults. And if the in infancy, if the laryngocele which is found to cause the respiratory obstruction, it is mostly the internal type. Then there is a third variety of the laryngocele, it is the combined when it spans both inside and outside the thyroid cartilage. So to understand the different type of laryngocele, let us have a, again the refreshing anatomy of the larynx. So this is the vestibular fold, this is the vocal ligament, this is the ventricle. If you see here, this is the hyoid bone, this is the thyroid cartilage and this is the thyroid membrane. So the saccule is located here and this is the ventricular area. So if there is any laryngocele, it will be uh, forming in this area and it will be piercing through this thyroid membrane to become external type of laryngocele. So this is how it looks. In the internal laryngocele, if you see here, it is confined within the thyroid cartilage. So this is the thyroid cartilage forms the main skeletal framework of the larynx. So this is an internal type. In the external type, if you see here, it is piercing the thyroid membrane and it presents as a mass in the neck. The combined is when the component is both outside and inside the thyroid cartilage. Now let's see the symptomatology of the laryngeal cyst. Strider is the most common symptom. The type of the strider, it is mainly inspiratory, but in some cases it may be biphasic also. Strider is uh, is present in most of the patients around 90% of the cases and it is seen that in these uh, group of patients 50% of the cases of laryngeal cyst will present within few hours after birth and 95% of, of these cases will definitely present before the six months of age 
so if any infant is having um, laryngeal cyst there are more likely chance they will present within the few hours after birth it is seen that the strider due to the laryngeal cyst it is it may improve with the extension of the neck in some of the cases among the other symptoms of the laryngeal cyst it can also present as respiratory difficulty dyspnea apnea or cyanosis and they will have a feeding issues coming to the symptomatology of the laryngocele the laryngocele causes only intermittent type of symptoms whereas the laryngeal cyst laryngeal sacular cyst it causes constant symptoms the laryngocele they rarely cause airway obstruction in infancy and if they become symptomatic the more chances it is in cases of internal type of laryngocele when the outpouching it obstructs the laryngeal inlet it is seen that if they do not present in the infancy they may remain asymptomatic or if they present in adults they present as soft lateral neck mass in adults when they present as a soft lateral neck mass it is most commonly seen in persons with a routine habit of developing transglottic pressure for example some like in glass blowers or trumpet players and when this neck mass is pressed from externally it gets deflated and it produces gurgling sound so how to diagnose a case of laryngeal sacular cyst and laryngocele the the diagnostic test is again the endoscopy here the direct laryngoscopy is preferred it helps us to classify the type of the lesions location of the lesions and also the texture of the lesions so before we are performing any uh, endoscopy in cases of strider recommendation is to keep a wide bore needle tracheotomy uh, set or a rigid bronchoscope at the type of endoscopy so as to avoid any untoward incident during the endoscopy period then the role of uh, imaging is like to confirm the diagnosis and to see the presence of the air in cases of any cystic lesions of the larynx so uh, the investigations which are asked for is the chest and the lateral neck radiograph barium swallow and ct scan of the neck and these imaging studies must be done in the preoperative evaluation of any case of strider in infancy coming to the treatment of the laryngeal sacular cyst the treatment recommendation is endoscopic marsupialization of the cyst and it is most commonly done, done with the carbon dioxide laser and idea is to ablate the back wall of the cyst but if in case it recurs following the marsupialization then either it can be managed by multiple endoscopic procedures or it can be managed by an external approach that is the lateral cervical approach where the incision it extends to the thyroid membrane at the superior margin of the thyroid cartilage and through this window the cyst ball is excised then in some of the cases uh, some of the infants they may need tracheotomy also if there is severe respiratory obstruction the treatment of the laryngocele is rarely needed because the reason being in uh, most of the cases are asymptomatic and in infants it, the studies have found that the true laryngoceles are very rare but if at all it is needed the surgical options in infancy being the endoscopic deroofing of the lesions the excision can also be done by using the lasers or by the aspiration of the sac with this i come to an end of this video thank you for watching this video